All right. Decided my uh, yeah goodbye. So, anyway, with that being said, I decided what my next project is going to be, and I'm going to knock out another scroll saw bowl. Although this one is going to be a, a pattern I've come up with myself, and well, here it is. And I just, what I did was I just sketched it out really fairly quickly and easily on PowerPoint. Let me just give you a close up of it there. And what I've got to do is I've got to oops, I've got to cut some uh, uh, some lumber to the appropriate size. So I was digging through my scrap pile. And I found some leftover cherry boards from when I made the uh, apothecary cabinet that you can see in the background there. And uh, so anyway, I decided I really liked the way the, uh, the, the light part of the wood is showing here. And I'm going to use that to contrast with the maple that I don't have sitting here. Hold that thought. <laughs> Yeah, how's that for how's that for being prepped? Okay, so anyway, uh, what I've got to do is, as you can see here, I've got to cut a few pieces out, and the cherry's going to be fairly easy. I just have to cut out right now. I just have to cut out four pieces that are three inches high or wide and four inches, excuse me, four and a half inches long, and some ma the maple. On the other hand, the cuts are going to be a little trickier because the pieces are so small. I'm going to try to minimize waste, but I also have to have to do it safely. So. This will probably end up being a job for the miter saw, but we will see once I'm ready to rock on. So uh, anyway, the first thing I need to do is I need to get out there and mill these cherry pieces down to the right size. And that's just going to involve uh, running them through the table saw to get a nice flat edge here and then turning them around the other way and getting a, you know, a solid three inches. Uh, or uh, boards that are just only three inches wide. And actually, I'll probably do that for the maple as well. So get the, get a nice chunk that's three inches wide. So, Oh, and this, don't pay any attention to this. Uh, all right, here we go. And uh, finally, I'm ready for the next part of the glue up. 
and I'm giving you the close up here just to show you exactly what's going on. I got the four pieces uh, with the maple triangles and what I'm doing is each piece is lined up with the corner of the triangle on the next piece. However, this is, again, this is one of those where the glue ups are really a lot more important than any of the other work because uh, I do need to be very, very precise in what I'm doing. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue these two boards together or these two blanks together and then I'm going to glue these two blanks together because you can see I've got a good solid mating surface right there. Then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and glue the whole thing up. I don't really want to risk, um, I don't really want to risk gluing everything up, having something slip out of a line, but there's just a lot, just a little too much going on right now. So anyway, with that, uh, the two separate glue ups make everything a lot simpler. So you know what? It's best to keep it simple. Be right back. Okay, here's the <clears throat> excuse me. Here's the blank for my latest <laughs> latest bowl, and you can see the pattern on there now. What it's going to look like. And I added a piece of cherry there in the center. And all I did was I went out to the table saw, measured very carefully, and then cut a square out. And when I had a snug but you know movable fit, brought it back in. Uh, brought, yeah, brought it back inside. Put some glue in there, hammered it into place. So so tight it's actually self clamping. So uh, at this point, the only thing left to do with this blank is to take it outside and sand down the well sand down the glue marks and the high spots and things like that and that's going to that's going to go pretty quick I actually I've probably used my random orbit sander because uh, I don't want to run the belt sander across the different grains so um, <clears throat> that and well it's a little hard to see but there's a little little bit of a gap right there between this cherry this cherry piece in the middle and uh, the piece that's made it up against. So I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, glue and sawdust, or excuse me, glue and sanding dust to that, and uh, it'll, it should come out looking fine. So uh, anyway, I'll be back and show you what the layout's going to look like. All right, got the blank sanded, and it's time to go ahead and mark it out. Now, usually if the, the pattern was a little bit more chaotic, I wouldn't worry so much about hitting the exact center here, but in this particular case, uh, because the pattern is so regular, I want to make sure I'm marking as close to the act actual center of this uh, <laughs> of this bit here in the middle as I can. And that looks pretty good. So,
Okay, it looks a little crooked, but uh, it's understandable because I knocked the tripod over uh, <laughs> a little bit ago and I broke the, one, the mount, so I'm going to have to get a new one. Anyway, <laughs> here it is. Uh, this is the pinwheel bowl, as I'm calling the design, and let me give you a bit of a close-up on it. And I think it actually <laughs> looks pretty cool. Uh, I was not too sure uh, how the... Uh, how it was going to come out looking, you know, on the on the on the inside once I started cutting up the side. But uh, it turns out it's, it, I, I like I said, I think it looks pretty good. And on the outside, you've got this nice, uh, nice, thin maple strip, and then the lighter cherry uh, acting as I don't know a flag or something like that. The, the cherry, the cherry uh, heartwood, and the, uh, the, then of course the sapwood on the outside, or the other way around. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so the different colored cherry, I think, worked out really well. The uh, maple worked out really well as a both, uh, you know, an accent as, and as a different color. And overall, I'm pretty pleased with this. Uh, the finish, uh, first time I've, I've done this shellac finish a couple of times, but this time I, I took a little bit more time with it. I just buffed out the coat, it cut, buffed it out in between coats, and uh, I think it looks pretty good as well. And the nice thing about a shellac finish is is that it is food safe. So even if it is even if you're using a spray on, so although it's nowhere near as durable as an oil finish, so uh, you know one way or the other. So anyway, there it is, and uh, hope you enjoyed the build. And uh, again, hope it inspires you to get out there and build something. So uh, with that, uh, I've got the next. Well, I got I got one more bowl in the pipeline, and the next project's already started. So. Uh, I'll get the videos and the projects and everything cranked out as well, you know, as quickly as practical. I've got a lot of other stuff on the burner as well. So uh, anyway, with that, it's been good talking to you. And uh, like I said, despite some frustrations, uh, uh, again, uh, another fun, another fun uh, uh, project. So uh, I guess I'll talk to you later. Bye.